What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tableau tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna be looking at lots of different visualizations, including the scatter plot and density maps. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, I have some very exciting news. In just two days on October 7th, I am gonna be partnering with Alterx to host a webinar. This webinar is completely for data analysts who are wanting to change careers to become a data analyst. Now you did hear that right, I will be the host of the event, but we will be bringing on guests as well who are industry experts who actually change careers to become data analysts, much like myself. They'll be sharing their stories of how they actually transition careers along with the tools that they found extremely useful and helpful to make that switch. And they'll be giving lots of advice along the way. So if you are somebody who is wanting to change careers to become a data analyst or just wanting to learn about data analytics, this is an absolute fantastic place to learn a lot more about that. I will leave a link in the description, so be sure to go and sign up for that. Again, I'm gonna be there, so it should be really fun. Without further ado, let's jump onto my screen and start the tutorial. Now, we are about to look at a ton of different visualizations. Uh, over here, you can see just an array of them, but not all of them are ones that I actually think are useful or ones that I would actually recommend using. And so I'm gonna take you through some of the ones that I absolutely think are worth learning and using and trying out. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of just show you how I might use them, how they might look, how I can navigate them a little bit. Now, before we do that, we do need to go download one data set. It's this Starbucks location worldwide. Yes, we're going to do a little bit of longitude latitude here. And all we have to do is click this downloads button and it will download. We're going to do that into downloads. We'll save that. Uh, yeah, I've already done that, but you know. I'm doing this with you guys and doing it for you. So let's go to our downloads. Now we have here, we want to come in here. We're going to copy it or um, you can cut it. Uh, and then we're going to paste it here. Yeah, replace it. Perfect. And now we have it ready to go. We'll come in here. Let's do a new sheet. And I already have it in there, but uh, I'm just going to show you what I would do. I'd do new data source. Uh, we'll do text file. We'll do directory and we will open it. And let's see what data we have in here before we actually begin uh, just super quickly. We have the brand, so um, whatever company has it, and then a bunch of um, location information, street address, city, uh, the state. This is all in the United States. So that's basically it. And what we are going to do is we're gonna go over to this sheet three and we have this directory two, that's the one I just pulled in. Uh, exact same thing as directory, but so the first visualization that we are going to look at is a bar and line graph. So what we're gonna take is the year right here. We're gonna take these global sales and these NA sales, and we're gonna be doing this one right here. So this has a combination of two separate uh, types of visualizations. So sometimes you just have lines, sometimes you just have these uh, these bar graphs or these bar charts uh, and we're combining the two and it's very nice. I like how this looks. Now, if you notice if I put this and a sales behind it, now it kind of cuts off. So now this global sales is in front. We're going to you know, put that back. I just wanted to show you that uh, right here. There's all some of global sales, some of NA sales. So if we go into this all, and we click this drop down. We can change it to a line. Um, we can change it basically whatever we want. I just hit Control Z to reverse that. But what we can do is we can go in here and we can change this color. And let's see if we can just make it red. Is that possible? Let's see what I did? I made it orange. That works for me. Um, just something to stick out a little bit more. Choose whatever color you want. And this is a really nice visualization. This is one that I have used in the past. We're looking at global sales versus the NA sales. And so it's very easy to see the distinction between the two and how one was doing a specific year versus how the other one was doing in that same year. And so I really like this. If you want to do something uh, like keeping it consistent, you can do two bars. I don't really like this one as much. Um, and you can, again, you can really change it up. Um, there's lots of different ones that you can do. Again, I prefer the line, but you know, do whatever you think is best. I'm gonna change it back because this is not how I wanna keep it. But there you go. So that is the first one that we are going to look at. Let's move on to the second one, and we actually will be using 
our, our Starbucks data here. Now, when you bring in data that has um, any type of map or, or um, address or postal code or things like that or, or country, it's typically going to create this latitude and longitude. And it's going to generate that. Now, what we want to do is bring this longitude right up here and this latitude right there. And if you do the show me right now, it's giving us this. But what we want to do is add what we're looking for. So what will we actually be trying to search for on this map? You can do anything from like a postal code um, and it will drag us right here. Let's come over to this. This allows us to kind of scroll around a little bit. Um, we're going to mess around with this one for just a little bit. And let me see if I can. That's nice. That might be too big. Let me back up one. So at least in the continental US, a little bit down here, this, these are the postal codes. So right now we're looking at postcodes. Uh, and there are a lot that you can do with this, um, really. Color will make almost no difference. It just becomes this mess. So you don't typically want to do something like that, uh, at least not for this. Let's go to size. And if we make it really small, you can kind of see these groupings, these pairings, um, typically of like larger cities or major major metropolitan areas. And so you can do this and it's, and it's really, really easy. I don't recommend uh, labeling this. I don't even know if it'll do it. Um, it would be an absolute mess to try to label all these postcodes. But let's bring this out and let's bring these state and provinces in. Now, right now we have these little tiny, tiny uh, dots on here. And I think what we want to do is not increase the size, but over here, we want to actually do this and make it a map. And so now it's going to fill in all the states. Uh, we can, you know, why not? We'll add some color here. Um, but we can, oh, it has it numbered. I didn't think they were numbered. Um, oh, that's interesting. I haven't seen that. I didn't look at that before. I was just uh, found that interesting. But now we can see what, uh, what states Starbucks is in. And as you can see, they're in all 50 states. But it's something interesting to um, look at, to think about. Now, if we go right up here, we can again choose a different type. And we're going to go to the density. Now, right now, it's just doing a density on the, uh, the state. Um, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to bring back postal code. I'm just switching it up on you a little bit. And you can do it as small or as big as you'd like. Um, you know, I like to do somewhere in the middle. Um, probably right, maybe right about there is fine. Um, I don't think it's going to make sense to really add any color here. Again, all these postal codes are different, so it's just going to be complete mishmash. But uh, this is kind of how you can use a density map. And you can do this uh, with uh, countries. You can do this with postal codes. You can do this with any type of kind of like address or location-based data. So that is how you can use a map. Again, there's lots of different ways to use a map. And so I'm not going to show you every single way, but in a really brief way, this is how you can use a map to actually visualize your data that does have location uh, based information in it. So let's go over to sheet three uh, and this data that we have over here, it just allows for a lot of different types of visualizations. So we're going to use this one. Um, and there are lots of other ones that you might see out there like this one right here. Uh, we obviously wouldn't be using this. We might do something like this change the label um and maybe add why are both of these in here um let's get rid of this oops that's not what i meant let's actually add that let's do the sum of global sales and we'll just make that into a label as well so what you can do with these and and how you're able to use them and visualize them Again, these are not, you'll see these often, but these are not often ones that I would recommend you use. That's very similar to these packed bubbles. Um, you can add these global sales in here again, add the label. It just, uh, it sometimes is not as straightforward the information that it's trying to tell you, right? You kind of have to search for it a little bit. You kind of have to look around, um, but you can find some good visualizations in here for very specific types of data. And so these are just ones to consider. Uh, one that you'll see all the time 
is uh, this guy right here. And uh, let me see if I can expand this a little bit because this is very small. Um, let's see. We have the size. I just want global sales. And let's label that. The size. How do, I, how do I expand this? I haven't done this in a while. Let me just expand this. I don't use pie charts. Up. What is happening? This is a incredibly large pie chart. Oh my gosh. I am making this. Um, this is becoming a problem. There we go. Uh, and what I actually wanted to do was label the uh, genre as well, as I've been doing in all the other ones. Uh, and we'll label this. Now, look, whether you are a fan of pie charts or not, you have to understand that people use them. Uh, some people just like how they look. And for certain data, it can do well. For things that have a lot of different um, groupings or categories, it usually isn't super great, uh, but it does give you some type of order of things, give you a quick glance, and people use them, right? So let's not pretend like it's like the, the, the hideous stepchild, all right? People use it. People have it in their dashboards and their visualizations all over. So it's best to just know what they look like, know how to do them, know um, how to use them best. Again, I'm not a super huge, huge fan of it myself. I've used it once or twice, but one to look out for. And again, you can come over to here and use, it's called a box and a whisker plot. Um, it's good for these large um, distributions. Uh, you know, this is like the median, upper, upper, lower, lower. I don't use these a lot, but I know a lot of people who love them. Something to just look at and consider, mess around with it a little bit. It's pretty, I think, straightforward. And it does give you some good insight into your data if you know how to use it. Now there is one last one that I want to show you. I'm just gonna create it on a new sheet, make it easy. Uh, we'll do year here, we'll do sum of, let's do NA sales, why not? And we are gonna make this like this. Now it's very similar to a line chart, but when we break it out by the genre and we add some color, you know, it's just a different way to visualize this information you can, uh, you know, potentially add some stuff in here, like some labels if you uh, want to, depending on how it looks for you. But this is just another way to visualize the data. So wanting to give you guys some options, wanting to give you some things that you might want to look at if you haven't already used these before. These are ones, all, every single one that I've showed you are ones that I've at least used once. Um, this one I maybe have literally only used once. But the first ones that I showed you, the ones I pointed out as the ones that I really wanted you to know are great visualizations to learn how to use and learn how to make useful for the data that you have. With that being said, that is all that we are looking at in this video. Again, I've tried to keep it super easy. Just wanted to show you some different visualizations, the data that you can use to get those visualizations and just some other options in case you wanted to get a little bit uh, spontaneous, a little bit out there, a little bit funky uh, to show your boss or something like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I will see you in the next video.